Um, they got some great weather today, uh, not too humid, uh, no rain, uh, just a perfect day to practice. Um, very solid Tuesday. Uh, just really like the way the kids came out and worked today. I uh, thought they uh, competed really well all throughout practice. Um, you know, we talked about, you know, before practice today and also after practice today, you know, you hear all these people talk about the process, you know, your coach Saban talk about it a lot. Uh, you know, I've talked about it. You know, what's the process? The process is going out each day and giving just incredible effort, pushing yourself to be the best, focused, uh, working to compete, doing that every single day. Then, you know, doing the things you got to do nutritionally, taking care of your body, getting a good night's sleep, then come back the next day and do it again, and then do it again, and do it again, and do it again. And the guys that can stack positive days on top of positive days and really focused on taking care of their body and developing themselves, those are the guys that you see developing throughout the process. And I thought today was a great example. Now we got to come back tomorrow and stack another positive day on top of it. So uh, were there mistakes? Absolutely. There's tons of mistakes each and every day, but effort attitude was very solid. Uh, and you know that if you get that every day, you're going to improve. <clears throat> okay, we'll open up the questions for Coach Houston. Coach, is a little different question a little bit, but kind of going on uh, depth, and I'm wondering uh, with contact tracing specifically, is is there any guys on the roster you're experimenting with at all, like playing not both ways, but playing a different position or learning a different position? Are there any guys like that? Or are you messing around with any of that type of stuff right now? Quite, quite a bit. Um, you know, for example, in the offensive line, uh, most of those guys are playing at least two positions. Uh, a couple of them can play all five. Uh, and so certainly anywhere we can double train someone, you know, we're doing that because uh, you're right. You got to create, this is the year you got to create depth. Uh, you have what you have. It's not like we have a, you know, a, a waiver wire or something like that. We can pick up a free agent in the middle of the season. Uh, you know, you have what you have. And so, um, you know, you're going to see some guys out there on the field playing this year that maybe normally, you know, they would, they would play less, be redshirted, whatever. Uh, this is going to be one of those years where the, a lot of guys got to be ready to play. Coach, from a pass rushing perspective, obviously losing Kendall Futrell, I know it hurts, but have you seen any guys step up in that regard early in preseason? Well, I mean, I think that uh, through Coach Harrell's scheme, um, you know, you're going to create pass rushers from all over the place. Uh, you know, it's one thing Coach Kirkpatrick has commented on is, you know, He's seen everything he's probably going to see all year already in preseason camp. So, um, you know, Rick DeBrayu, I think, is having a very solid camp, and he's a guy that, uh, you know, he's pretty quick twitch, pretty athletic. Uh, and so that's a guy that's, you know, stood out, uh, you know, to a degree there. Um, I think some of the young kids, Jason Romero, Kareem Stinson, um, you know, very athletic, uh, you know, really good speed off the edge. Um, and then, you know, some of your second level guys, you know, the backers and stuff like that, you're going to see some some of those guys involved in the pass rush uh, pretty regularly. From a conditioning standpoint at this point through camp, Coach, where do you guys feel like you are? Uh, I know it's not where you want to be, but do you feel like you're getting there at least? We're getting there. Um, you know, that's I do think the guys are pushing themselves and uh, – and practice themselves into shape. But, you know, we're a whole lot better off right now than we were a couple of weeks ago. And, you know, the ones that miss some time, uh, no matter what the reason, whether it's medically or if, you know, they're, they're quarantined or something like that, um, you know, those are the guys that you see the struggle a little bit when they come back. Uh, and that, that shows you really where the rest of them are. Um, but, you know, we're getting there. You can't replace four months with uh, Big John and the staff, but we're in much better shape right now than we were. Coach, as far as COVID-19, uh, with UNC having to go to online classes, you got to be proud of your guys where things have been uh, pretty well so far with the team. I know condition-wise and also with uh, having this new wrinkle of dealing with COVID-19 for the 2020 season. They are. I, I think they've handled everything very well. Um, you know, it's it's one of those things where this, this whole thing is, you know, precautions, taking care of each other, taking care of yourself. Uh, but there's also, in my opinion, a little bit of luck involved too. I mean, it's, uh, you got to try to mitigate the risk factors as much as you can. Um, and, you know, our kids have done a good job with that. It's just got to, you know, ho hopefully it continues. 
you discussed earlier when it first kind of started in July, having a little bit of um, an issue. What do you think the players learned from just seeing how that does work when it's happening? Well, I think, you know, they, they learned this thing's pretty serious. It's real. You know, it's, uh, it's one of those things, just like anything else, you don't, you don't, uh, you don't believe it's real serious until it happens to you. Uh, and then, you know, when we start having those problems that we had back in July, I do think it woke everybody up. Uh, I think pausing the workouts uh, for a week back in July really kind of rattled everybody. Hey, we got to get our stuff together. Uh, and, you know, I think they've done a much better job since then. Um, you know, so I, I think, I think it also shows just they want to play. So they're doing the things they got to do in order to give themselves that opportunity. Coach, you've expressed that you've made some progress offensively. What are some of your focuses of concern at this point? Well, I, I feel good about our personnel. Um, you know, there's one or two spots where I'm a little worried about the depth. Uh, the biggest thing is just getting everybody on the same page. Uh, you know, we've had a couple of guys out. We got everybody back. Uh, you know, just getting them, you know, gelling together and meshing together uh, is the biggest concern right now on that side. Um, you know, certainly, you know, the, the playmakers, they showed up last Friday. Uh, I'd like to see them show up again this Friday, the consistency factor. Um, I think that's another important factor. On defense with Coach Harrell, have you had any conversations lately or do you have a sense of where he's at on a comfort level uh, even compared to the spring or the start of, of camp, it, it, where's your sense with, with him at this point? Well, I think, one, the kids are having a lot of fun. Uh, I think he's done a great job re-energizing that group. You know, they play with a lot of emotion. Uh, they play really, really hard. Uh, you can see the confidence that they're gaining daily. Um, so I think, you know, with each day that goes by, uh, he and the kids are feeling more and more comfortable. Um, it's still... You know, you're 15, 15 practices in to a brand new system. So uh, there's still a long ways to go. Uh, but every single day, you know, you see improvement there with that. This is our first time talking to you since Friday in the scrimmage. So when you reviewed the tape, did anything extra jump out to you from scrimmage one to scrimmage two? Um, I think just how, you know, in scrimmage one, we talked about, you know, the offense really didn't give itself a chance uh, between turnovers, penalties, and, you know, protections, you know, just didn't give themselves a chance. I thought that uh, last Friday, uh, you know, virtually no, no turnovers, one late in the scrimmage, only giving up one sack, um, you know, they eliminated the negative plays that hurt them. Third down, you know, really stood out where we made some critical plays on third down to keep drives going. Um, but then defensively, you look at it and, and how close the defensive guys were to, you know, making the play or getting a stop. You know, it's just, it was such a competitive scrimmage and you come out of it feeling, well, you know what? You didn't play as bad defensively as just, you know, the offense made some critical plays, which I'm glad to see that. Um, you know, coming back this Friday, uh, you know, it's a pretty little rivalry going between uh, Donnie and, and Blake around the, uh, around the office. So, you know, they're, they're having fun with it. The kids are – I've let it kind of go a little bit more than usual this year as far as letting them kind of go at each other, jawing, you know, create, creating that rivalry. Because I think you got to have that right now with where we are, uh, with everything going on. Uh, you got, you got to have that to keep the energy up at practice. So, um, you know, that's what I want to see. I want to see, you know, both sides play at a high level this week. Coach, do you do like the steak dinners for, I know you do that during the year. Do you do that for uh, the, with the scrimmages uh, for who uh, wins and who loses? We haven't been. I th you know, they eat pretty good now. It's not like, it's not like they're starving. The training, the training table meals better than anything I had in college. <laughs> but uh, now it, the, the biggest thing with them is, you know, they got to listen to the, the other side. You got to listen to them squawk for an entire week. I mean, that's, that's worse than anything else. So uh, they've really had a lot of fun. I tell you, this is an enjoyable bunch to coach. Uh, and I've really enjoyed this preseason camp. And, uh, you know, I look forward to playing games. But uh, this has been a really enjoyable restart after the quarantine. Just following up real quick on the question I had earlier about positions and yeah. different things. Is there, skill player-wise, is there anything crazy? Uh, you know, C.J. Johnson could play safety or is there, I mean, have you thought any of that type of stuff or you just kind of hope that the 
you don't end up in that situation. <laughs> yeah, I don't know about that one right there. I know everybody <laughs> out there is fighting over Jeremy Lewis. Uh, Coach Harrell's trying to recruit him every single day over the defensive side, but uh, you know, I don't, I don't think Coach Mines is going to let go of him anytime soon. Um, you know, we don't, we don't really have anything like that going on. We do have a lot of you know the Sams. You know, you might have, you know, a guy that plays field safety buck and Sam. You know, they're learning all three positions to create that depth there. Um, you know, the receivers. Blake, for the most part, can play all any of the slot or outside receiver spots. Um, you know, really, Audie can also. Uh, so, you know, there's a lot of, you know, learning an, another spot that's similar to yours that's going on, uh, you know, to develop that stuff. Now, Taji Hudson. He could probably play, you know, any stand-up position on either side of the football. You know, he's just got to learn it. Coach, it was announced this afternoon that Marshall and Eastern Kentucky will play on September 5th at uh, Edwards Stadium, Edwards Stadium, excuse me, up in Huntington. So uh, just talk about that. And it is at this point, is that a ship that sailed as far as us potentially adding an SES game that weekend? I don't know. That one's above my pay grade. So I've, I've, I've petitioned for what I wanted. But, uh, you know, there's so many factors to consider with that stuff. Uh, you know, you, you have a lot of factors with the state of North Carolina, and we're trying to figure out those, just what game day is going to look at. Uh, I know that the administration met on that today. Um, you know, I, I was in there for just a few minutes and just, you know, I, I kind of get a grasp of what they're, uh, what they're looking at there, um, you know, if we could find the right uh, situation, uh, I would be in favor of it, but there's just so many factors, uh, just so many factors that go into, can you schedule a game on September 5th? Um, I, do, I do think it's, you know, good and bad, you know, we'll get to see Marshall uh, the week before they play us. So, you know, you'll at least get a good look at them, uh, but they'll also get a, a you know, live game reps uh, before they play us. So it is what it is, control what you can control. Coach, can you talk a little bit about what your schedule is going to look like the rest of the week, practice-wise? <clears throat> uh, we'll be shells tomorrow, uh, similar practice to today. We're going to try to go real light on Thursday, uh, just try to sharpen some stuff up, uh, have another uh, inter-squad scrimmage on Friday. Uh, Saturday is an off day from football. Uh, Big John will have him in the weight room Saturday morning, uh, and then a treatment rehab, and that's it for Saturday. And then Sunday is a, a, a typical Sunday. Um, you know, we do – I really want a, a, a real good look at everybody this Friday, and then we've got to start – you know, we started a little bit today kind of developing depth charts, uh, getting the right guys working on special teams. So, you know, after this week, then it becomes, you know, get everybody healthy, get the young kids enough reps so they're ready to play, and then start getting ready for Marshall. <laughs> 